Experimental Genomic Imprinting by the Ecologically Cool Kids. Before I begin on what is parental genomic imprinting, I want to start off with what is epigenetics. This is the study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than alteration of the genetic code itself. In other words, active versus inactive genes, a change in the phenotype but not the genotype. So this is when the DNA sequence is the same, the coding is exactly the same, however depending on what is silenced or turned off and what is kept turned on will depend on certain factors and in result the phenotype or the physical appearance will be different. What influences epigenetics? The epigenetic change is a regular and natural occurrence that can also be influenced by several factors. This includes the age, the environment, lifestyle, and disease state. For example, if two twins were identical, however, one had a healthier lifestyle, ate healthier greens, worked out, and when the other did not, their physical appearance could be altered. There's at least three systems including DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding RNA. The nCRNA associated gene silencing are currently considered to initiate and sustain epigenetic change. Now that we know that, what exactly is parental genomic imprinting? Genomic imprinting is the epigenetic phenomenon by which certain genes are expressed in a parent of origin specific manner. For most genes, we inherit two cop working copies one from the mom and one from the dad. But with imprinted genes, we inherit only one working copy. Depending on the gene, either the copy from the mom or the copy from the dad is epigenetically silenced. Silencing usually happens through the addition of methyl groups, which is also known as the epigenetic tags. This is during egg or sperm formation. The epigenetic tags on imprinted genes usually stay on the life of the organism. Regardless of whether they came from the mom or the dad, certain genes are always silenced in the egg and others are always silenced in the sperm. Genes get suppressed so only one allele is expressed. This is also known as uniparental disomy. So why does genomic imprinting even exist? Why would a cell have two copies of a gene if it's only going to use one? Its role has to do with evolution. It may have helped with the selective selection of partners as well as creating and maintaining new species. There are three main hypotheses that are used in order to identify the advantage of genomic imprinting. The evolvability model, the ovarian time bomb hypothesis, and the kinship theory, also known as the conflict theory, or the genetic conflict theory. The evolvability model is when imprinting provides a population with enhanced adaptability to changing environments by protecting the subset of the alleles in each generation from the full force of natural selection. The 
ovarian time bomb theory proposes that imprinting evolved in mammals in order to prevent spontaneous development of unfertilized eggs and also trophoblastic disease of the ovaries. The kinship theory or the conflict theory is when the inequality between the parental genomes due to imprinting is a result in differing interest of each parent in terms of the evolutionary fitness of their genes. To go more in depth with that, it is also known as the genetic conflict hypothesis. It is suggested that imprinting grew out of the competition between males for maternal resources. In some species, more than one can father offspring from the same litter. A house cat, for example, can mate more than once during heat and have a litter of kittens with two or more fathers. If one kitten from the father grow larger than the rest, his offspring is more likely to survive to adulthood and pass through their genes. So it is in the interest of the father's genes to produce larger offspring. The larger kittens will be able to compete for maternal resources at the expense of the father's kittens. On the other hand, a better outcome for the mother's genes would be for all the kittens to survive to adulthood and reproduce. The mother alone will provide nutrients and protection for the kittens throughout pregnancy and after birth. So she needs to be able to divide her resources among several kittens without compromising her own needs. Parental imprinting favors the production of larger offspring, while the maternal imprinting favors a smaller set of offspring. This conflict of interest sets up an epigenetic battle between the parents, also known as a tug of war. The genomic imprinting is rare in mammals because most genes are not imprinted. In the early 1980s, nucleus transplantation experiments in mouse zygotes were performed. These experiments confirmed that for normal mammalian development, both the maternal and the paternal genomes are required. The vast majority of the mouse embryos derived from parthenogenesis, two maternal egg genomes, and the androgenesis, two paternal sperm genomes, die at or before the implantation stage. There's forms of genomic imprinting through plants, animals, and insects. Through the flowering plants, some genes are found to be expressed from both maternal genomes while others are expressed exclusively from the lone paternal copy. In insects, honeybees, ants, and other hematotheria have reproduced either through fertilized eggs or unfertilized eggs. This sex-determining system develops males from unfertilized eggs and females develop from fertilized eggs. The queen honeybee decides whether to fertilize an egg or to leave it unfertilized. Improper imprinting can occur in humans with developmental abnormalities. perder willi syndrome consists of learning difficulties, short stature, and compulsive eating. Individuals are missing gene activity that are normally coming from the father. The prater willi syndrome occurs when the father's copy is missing or when there are two maternal copies. In the Engelmann syndrome, 
learning difficulties, speech problems, and seizures or jerky movements are the symptoms. Individuals are missing gene activity that normally comes from the mother. The Engelmann syndrome occurs when the mother's copy is defective or missing, or when there are two paternal copies. So there are ligers and tigons. The imprinting patterns often differ even in closely related animals, such as tigers and lions. When lions and tigers meet in captivity, they sometimes produce hybrid offspring. Depending on who the mother is, the offspring looks different. For example, a male lion and a female tiger produces a liger which is the biggest of big cats. The male tiger and a female lion produces a tigon, a cat that is about the same size as its parents. The difference in size and appearance is mainly due to the different parental imprinted genes. So the forms of genomic imprinting are also in animals. A good example was what was mentioned before through the house cats. Many imprinted genes are involved through growth and metabolism, and each litter of cat could have more than two fathers. So notice in the picture that all, not all the kittens are of the same color. They're all different than their brothers and sisters. Genetic imprinting has difficulty in cloning. The mammals are extremely difficult to clone. In order to produce a single healthy clone, the cloning procedure needs to be done dozens or even hundreds of times. Clones have abnormal epigenomes, which leads to an array of problems. This includes problems with imprinted genes, which is likely to be the root of this difficulty in cloning. The most common method of cloning is called somatic cell nuclear transfer. The somatic cell nuclear transfer is when a donor cell is removed from a non-reproductive cell, also known as skin cell or memory cell and placing it into an egg cell that is that had its nucleus removed. In the picture on the right is Dolly the sheep, and that was the first mammal to be cloned by the somatic cell nuclear transfer. The epigenetic problems with clones are likely to arise for two reasons. First, the donor nucleus comes from a differentiated cell with epigenetic tags already in place. These tags keep genes switched on or off and allow the cell to perform its responsibilities. After the donor nucleus is transferred, the egg does its best to erase the epigenetic tags. But the process is faulty, delayed, and incomplete. Secondly, the epigenetic tags in the donor nucleus have been copied several times over. While the machinery that copies the DNA code is faithful, it makes about one error in half a billion, the epigenetic copying machinery itself is sloppy. In some cases, the error rate can be as high as 1 in 25. Miscopied epigenetic tags on even a very small number of imprinted genes in the donor nucleus could have serious consequences during the development of the resulting embryo. That is the end of the lecture. Thank you.